welcome to another episode of Make Your Mind Your Best Ally. And today I have my friend David Chen. Hi. So David, um, can you tell me a little bit about your experience during the US Open when you got captured by the cameras? Wow. Okay. So in 2020, uh -huh. it was during COVID. Okay. Right. So there was no fans allowed at the US Open. Oh my God. And my bestie, Sasha Vickery, got a wild card to uh -huh. be in a tournament. And each player were allowed to bring three um, okay, three guests. Three with guests them. with them, mm -hmm. like part of to be part of the team. So she brought her coach, her fitness coach, and normally she'll bring her mom. Mm -hmm. And it was during COVID time, and it was hard for everybody. So I got a phone call one day from the mom uh -huh. and Paula. She goes, David, how would you like to accompany my daughter to the U.S. Open? Because oh my God. yeah, because you're so positive. Yeah, and it's a tough time for everyone. Yeah, and including especially the athletes. Mm -hmm. and it's going to be a bubble, so mm -hmm. the only places that the players can go are between hotels and tennis courts. Tennis courts or hotels. Yeah, I've, I remember that. Well. So it's going to be a tough time for anyone to be in a bubble. So the mom knows how me and Sasha get along really well and mm -hmm. that I'm a positive influence yeah. and I make things fun. Right. So, and let me stop you right there because yeah. that is one of the reasons why I invited David today because of your personality. I know you, you're very close, close friends with a lot of like really high, you know, top players that are like, especially female players in yes. the tour. And it's because of how positive you are and how, and we'll get into this, how you see the game as a game. Yes. It's no big deal, right? And, you know, some of us, including myself, we make such a big deal about the meaning, you know, of, of tennis and the meaning of winning and losing. But anyway, so keep going with your experience. Yeah, so um, so I showed up at a U.S. Open. It was my first time ever. And I went to one of my favorite players, Naomi Osaka's match. I went mm -hmm. to Serena's match. And in the stand, there was like, 50 other people, but nobody was clapping. Nobody was making any noises oh because, God. you know, they're all with a uh -huh. player or their player. So, yeah. So I'm like, this is kind of boring. So I'm going to make this my own David Chen US Open experience. Oh my God. <laughs> and you certainly did. So between the games, uh, the changeovers, they would play music. And then I started dancing, started clapping, having my own little moments. That's too funny. You know, I lived my own happy world. Yeah. And somehow the camera captured me. Uh huh. And when I went back home to the hotel, Sasha goes, David, you are going viral on Twitter. <laughs> I I'm saw like, that. what? I saw that online. So basically, it's like clips of me dancing and the people caption says, someone is happy that tennis is back. Oh, how cool. Yeah, because wow. it was the first tennis tournament yeah. since COVID that that was happening. Yeah, yeah. You know, so, and from there, I got a call from Tennis Magazine. Yes. Wow. Like, <laughs> Yeah. And one of the editors goes, David, um, we would like to interview you. How did you end up here? Yeah. So I did my explanation and th they're like, David, you're so fun. You're in yeah. besides the tennis matches. You're one of the best entertainers of, uh, at so a U.S. Cool. Open. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That is so awesome. And then it was, I was like the first front page at tennis.com uh -huh. and from there, the next day, I got a call from Good Morning America. Wow. I know. I'm like, it's like you go from going to the US Open with a friend of yours to like become this popular person. That's well, so I don't cool. want to say, you know, popular, but I was, I became like the only fan at the US Open. Uh huh. Yeah. So, and Good Morning America, first of all, it's too early for me to watch that show. I'm not a morning <laughs> person. So when they asked me, I'm like, you know, I'm not going to wake up that early, yeah. but you're welcome to use whatever materials, mm -hmm. you know, interview me, whatever you like. Yeah, yeah. So I didn't even know what they were going to do. Mm -hmm. Next day morning, I went to the U.S. Open on site. First person that came to me was Coco Golf's parents. Okay. He's like, David, we saw you on Good Morning America. I'm like, really? <laughs> and then I look at it, some of the clips and they did like a minute and a half of me, you my dancing. segment of oh. me having a great time with my friend Sasha at a U.S. Open. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. That's so Yeah. Cool. And one of the things was um, Sasha practiced with Serena mm -hmm. on uh, in Altharash Stadium. Yeah. And I was on the court with them. I was, like, being their ball boy, picking up balls and feeding Aww. their balls back and forth with Serena. And that was 
definitely an experience of a lifetime. Oh my God, that is so cool. So I know that, that you've become very good friends with some of the players. Can you tell me what is it that you give them that makes them feel so good? Like, During during matches, is it the well, friendship? The main, yeah, definitely the friendship because mm -hmm. um, I'm there because I'm their friend, not because yeah. they pay me as their coach, not because they pay me as their physio. It's pure friendship. Yeah, and I care for them. Um, it's a lonely place. People don't understand that, and it's it's not that glamorous. You know, you go from the hotel to the um, tournament place. True, and... I've been to so many tournaments, and it is a very lonely environment. Yeah. Because when I first went to the U.S. Open, I thought it was going to be all these girls having a good time, yeah. like hang out with each other. But right away, I noticed, no, yeah. you know, the girls, first of all, they like stick to their own yep. team and they don't really hang out or talk to anybody. Mm -hmm. Rarely. Yeah. So and then I start, you know, seeing some friends and I make some friends with the WTA players. And I always get these, I often get messages like, David, you know, we're not having a great time here per se, but you're such a, a breath oh, of fresh air. That is so And I cool. love hearing that because I feel I'm making a difference yeah. in their career, in their touring yeah. lives. Yeah. So, and the way I do it is they all already know how to play tennis. Yep. At that level, I don't need to tell them how to mm -hmm. hit a forehand, hit a backhand. Yeah. But the main thing is how they put their mentality yeah. or mental state into the match. Yeah. And I make them not worry about the result. Mm, that's the key. You know, I told them how to have a good time on and off the court. Mm -hmm. And I'm good at having fun off the court. Yeah. So by almost kind of distract them, distracting them from like the, the tournament. The reality that reality, they think is, they is think happening. It, exactly. Yeah. Because they think tournament tennis, tennis. But outside the tennis court, there's a life out there. Yeah. And I try to um, remind them and embrace what's out there yeah. outside of the tennis court. Right. Yeah. And that's so important because you live a different reality and I think you're not threatening to them. True. You know, because you're you're not one of the players. Correct. You're not one of the coaches. Yeah. You just there, like you said, you're not getting paid. You you really are honestly, you know, wanting to have a good time and wanting to make friends. Yes. And that's just so unheard of. <laughs> it is. So it is. Sad. Like my friend Ingrid Neal, you know, she's... Um, like about top 50 in doubles right now, she goes, David, you're like a unicorn. Yeah, you know, I agree. Nobody is like you on the tour. Yeah. You know, because ever since they're 10 years old, people that are paying attention to them are like agents, mm -hmm. coaches, who are there to see what they can get out of them, to make money out mm -hmm. of them. And for me, it's purely enjoyment, friendship, mm -hmm. and to have a good experience together. Yeah. That's so cool. And it's, it's so needed because it, it is so tough yeah. when you're playing, you know, and when you have all these pressures coming from everywhere mm -hmm. um, and from yourself thinking that, oh, my God, if I don't perform well, this is going to happen. And all the stories that we create in our heads. It is. <laughs> and it's gone on for a long time because one of my best friend, Ashley Harker Road, gorgeous yeah gorgeous <laughs> girl mm -hmm. anyways um so she was top 30 before and i became good friends with her and we talk about what the tour life is like yeah you know even 10 15 years ago it was tough it's lonely and mm. she after losing a match she would just leave wow and then you know she told me if i could go back time and she, if she had known me we would have stayed in the city explore and have a good time oh. after the match so Um, but, you know, we met better late than never. Yeah, no, that is true. <laughs> and, you know, the, the few years that I played, it it is so lonely. It's so yeah. sad. And, you know, mm -hmm. if, if you start putting all these things in your head about what it means that you're there, that you lose or that you win, it, it really could become a very miserable experience yes. for a lot of them. Mm -hmm. Because so. most of the fans see the glamour of the top 20 players making good money, treated very well. But... What about the rest of the tour? Like, yeah. you know, they're struggling for ranking points, struggling mm -hmm. for money. Because if you lose first round or second round, you're done for the week. Mm -hmm. You have no place to stay because mm -hmm. the tournament doesn't provide you with housing anymore. And your per diem is gone. So you're on your own until the following week or yeah. until the next tournament. Wow. And especially if you have coaches or physios, yeah. that's 
paying for even more people. So you have to worry about yourself, worry about yeah. your team. That's yeah. just a lot of pressure for the players. Mm. All right, but enough about them. Yes. Let's talk about you. <laughs> so David is also a very good tennis player. I have played against David, and I have been so frustrated with your game because <laughs> it's a very, very intelligent and very frustrating game, just to put it mildly. <laughs> so very powerful, especially in singles. So I wanted to ask David a, a, a few questions. It's basically, you know, I should call this episode, how did you do it? <laughs> how do you do it? Because David is, is, is like a unicorn, really, on the tennis court because, you know, he thrives on pressure, right? Yes. We've had a few conversations and I was just like, oh, my God, I got to have you because we need to know the secret sauce. Yes. Of how you do it. <laughs> so first question, can you tell me from your experience? Why people find your game so frustrating? Okay. So I have a very unique game. Mm -hmm. um, I have a great serve. Mm -hmm. I have good hands. I have, my overhead is probably my yep. best shot of my game. However, I have this very special slice forehand that I uh -huh. do. And that's all I do on my forehand. <laughs> yeah, you have to bend your knees every time. I know. And... Nobody does that. Yeah. You know, and nobody on the tour does that, except maybe, maybe Monica Nicolescu, but okay. who gets to play against Monica Nicolescu? Mm -hmm. So, you know, for my friends, right, for when I play other tournaments, they don't see shots like that. Yeah. Or when I play USTA leagues. And that forehand is the same take back, uh -huh. you know, preparation. And I can hit a deep slice, mm -hmm. a soft slice, a drop shot, angle, mm -hmm. hard. So I can... My, my, my doubles partner said, you have five different slices on that forehand. Yes, your accuracy is unbelievable. <laughs> yeah, and you never know which one's coming. Sometimes yeah. I don't know what's, which one's coming. So <laughs> to be just, honest. <laughs> so um, so that's, that's what really frustrates my, a lot of people because the ball stays low. Ah, uh, okay. You know, and it's got different depth mm -hmm. and it's got different pace and you just never know what's coming. Hmm. And... I, would I love say my backhand. Consistency too. is yes. one of the reasons why you frustrate a lot of people. Yes. Because you put your mind to you have a plan. Mm -hmm. It's you know where you're going, you know what you're gonna do, and it doesn't seem like you change your mind from from where you started. So what's like do you look at the player in the beginning of the match and do you observe do they like this slice? Do they you know, what is your process when you first start? So when I first warm up, I try to give my par double uh, opponent like a nice warm up. So I don't hit mm. worse slices. I almost like just like punch a back, okay. you know, a simple back. And I try to rally mostly with my backhand because it's more of a conventional shot. Okay. So yeah. I try to do that so they can get a good warm up. Yeah. And then once the match starts, they see that slice forehand. <laughs> it and all changes. They're like, what is that? <laughs> <laughs> Surprise! Yes, good for you. <laughs> so, and for me, I have not met one person say, "Oh, I love that hitting that slice." Yeah, nobody loves to hit a, yeah. a good slice. Yeah, you know, most hard. of the time, slice is known as a neutral shot. Mm -hmm. My slice, it's very offensive. Yeah, yeah. right. And it just keeps going. Yeah, and, it keeps and I lower. Yeah, and you have to have consistency. Uh -huh. And my mindset is, I believe in that shot. Yep. And I've done it for many years, and I've given so many opponents trouble. So my game plan is not going to change much. Mm -hmm. You know, when I scout an opponent or someone tells me how to play someone, I'm like, my game plan is not going to change. You're still David. Yeah, I'm you still, still David. have the game that you have. I'm going to play my game. I'm not going to suddenly hit a big Roger Federer forehand. That's not going to happen. So yeah. my game plan is simple. Do what I do best. I, that's And that, that <laughs> sounds so simple, but we all get into this reinventing the wheel sometimes yeah just because you saw something just because the person all of a sudden starts hitting angles now you want to become an angle um you know queen or king yeah when you don't practice that exactly but the thing is you know you still have to be smart like do they prefer their forehand do mm -hmm. they prefer their backhand and i played this guy he has a great slice backhand and he has a big forehand okay. and I, as I'm playing, I'm like, okay, I need to slice more to the forehand. Yeah. Because when I slice to the backhand, he doesn't he knows mind how as to much. Do it, yeah. But if I hit my backhand and loop to his backhand, yep. he, the, he he has a problem with a high one-handed backhand. Yeah. So you sh I'm still hitting the same shots yep. that I have, but just different locations and at yep. different times. 
Yeah, and it's it's you're so smart because you're you're looking at what you have in front of you. Yes. And you're giving them what they don't like. Yes. Rather than being in your head, mm -hmm. like, you know, <laughs> some people, and just thinking that in the five minutes of warm-up, all of a sudden you're going to become a different player. And, no. And like, like, for example, you said you don't warm up your slice no. during the forehand. I and, you know, know, a lot of people would be like, oh, my God, I got to warm, warm up all my strokes because how am I going to hit it, you know, if I yeah. don't hit? No, you're sure of what you know how to do it, and you can hit it with your eyes closed. Yeah. Probably. And I always tell people... Five minute warm up, fifteen warm up. If you don't know how to hit your own shot by five minutes, yeah. you don't have it. <laughs> you don't have it exactly. <laughs> so, huh. so, all right. So, okay. So, second question: What would you advise to someone playing against you on what to do when they get so frustrated playing against you? Well, first of all, I'm not, I'm gonna, I'm not gonna tell you how to beat me. <laughs> exactly. <Yeah. laughs> However, um, you know, when I play tennis, I always have a smile on my face. Okay. And actually, many players on the tour that I play against call me the smiling assassin. Ah. Uh, yes. Okay. <laughs> you know, I'm smiling, but yeah, because I'm having a good time. Yeah. And I love, I love to laugh at my mistakes. That's that is so key. Yeah, I love laughing at my mistakes, and when I see my opponent are frustrated, that just like puts another like strong it's will like, in my mind check. like oh good i got i got him there <laughs> I got to so for example i hit i had that slice and dice game when my opponents start trying to do the slice and dice game mm -hmm. i know they're done yeah because that's not their game that's not i know all of a sudden you got in <laughs> that's their not their game and you're changing what they're doing that's it's, excellent yeah so i would advise all players to you know no matter what kind of player you're playing you got to do play within yourself mm -hmm. You know, yep. use what you have. You might not want to go for as, if you're missing shots, don't go for as big shots yep. uh, as often. But you, the number one thing, put a ball back in first. Mm -hmm. You know, yes. so so if you're frustrated playing me, you yep. still need to make me hit one more ball. Mm -hmm. You know, don't just yeah. like try to out slice me yeah. or try to hit bigger, or, you yeah. know, make me hit one more ball. Exactly. And wouldn't you agree that the more consistent you get while you're playing, the calmer you get, the more trust you get in what you're doing? Because it's like, oh, okay, this is, you know, I'm starting to hit the ball deeper. I'm starting to, you know, there's no rush. There isn't. And the thing is, when a ball comes to you, you can do whatever you want with it. Mm -hmm. You know, and of course, my game isn't always perfect. Sometimes my backhand are just missing a little deep. So I would think, okay, you know what? Instead of trying to hit too hard and too deep, just spin it into yep. the middle until I find the feels. Same thing with the forehand. If yeah. my deep shots are not working, you know, find my feel first. So mm -hmm. you have to find your own rhythm. Exactly. And then with rhythm, it comes consistency. Exactly. You are making your mind your best ally. Yes. Right? <laughs> <laughs> okay, next question. So... Consistency is one of your best attributes. How do you define consistency and what are some of the habits that you have uh, in order to work on your consistency? So, um, yes, I believe my consistency is one of my best assets because I don't panic. Mm -hmm. You know, often when people get pulled out of the core or a rally is too long and they panic, like, I need to do something different or I need to end this point. Why? Yeah. You know, Consistency is about hit, getting one ball yeah. into the core. It's not yeah. how fast you can finish a point. Exactly. So mentally, number one, put the ball. Just think, I need to put that ball back in the core. Yeah. Yeah. Right? And but by me training, it's easier said than done. So I have trained myself because I play often. I physically, I trust myself mm -hmm. physically mm -hmm. that I can outlast my opponent. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because if you're out of shape, of course you're going to panic. <laughs> you can't get to, to the do. next ball. So by me, you know, train myself to be fit enough that I feel I can outlast my opponent. I can chase after almost every ball they try to hit at me. Right. Then it takes the pressure mm -hmm. of having to finish a point away. Yeah. And yeah. after once I have that, I'm like, I'm just going to put one more ball back. One more ball back. Exactly. I mean, it, it is that simple. But the problem that we all get into our heads is that all of a sudden we want to reinvent the wheel. Right. <laughs> You're in the middle of this point and all of a sudden is lasting a little bit longer than average. Mm -hmm. 
And then here comes the trust in yourself. Oh my God, maybe, maybe this is not right. Maybe I need to do something. Well, we go back to, you can't be a different player in five minutes, right? No, this is and what also, you have. And also like during a rally, you should tell yourself, I'm doing good. I put just another ball back. So like, you know, mm -hmm. believe in yourself that mentally that you are doing well just yeah. by putting one more ball back. Yeah. This point isn't over. So you're doing yeah. good. So yeah. think that way. <laughs> are you okay with the results? Are you okay with the potential that you could lose? Well, um, tennis, someone's always going to win, someone's mm -hmm. going to lose. And I kind of don't really worry much about losing mm -hmm. because I always say like three things. Number one, um, I won enough. So this match, lo this match yeah, losing, it's not going to make a difference. Uh -huh. You know, it does not take away from the the player or what I've achieved already. Uh -huh. And number two, I always said, there's winning and there's learning. So when oh, I oh there you go right yeah. when I lose, I always get feedbacks about my own game mm -hmm. and or about my opponent. Mm -hmm. Like for the future for the next match, what did I learn? Yeah, right. And if you see that you learn something from losing, it's a good thing. That's true. That's right? true. How else would you learn? Yeah, you, you're not gonna learn uh -huh. like if you win all the time because you stick. Of course, when you're winning, stick with what's going on. Mm -hmm. But if you lose, learn something new. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. That's cool. So mm -hmm. even if I lose a match, I'm like, I could have done that. You know, next time I'm going to do that yeah. or I'll work on better on that shot or yeah. that situation. It and really, it, it is about the journey, not yes. the destination. You know, yeah. what, how much, how much fun can you make it and what, what can you learn? Yeah. And one of the advantages that a lot of us don't realize is that in tennis you don't have a clock telling you you have five more minutes and that's it whoever that's finishes true. first in the that's next true. five minutes which other other sports do right true. we can last forever yes so back to the consistency you can hit the ball as many times as you need to a hundred times if you have to yeah you're not going to get penalized for hitting one yeah. more ball in or yeah. make it last longer Right. So what's the rush? Exactly. You know, yeah. that, that's something that everybody has to kind of get in their heads. And and maybe it comes from something, you know, from childhood, some, something else. You know, why is it that you are not comfortable, you know, hitting one more ball? You know, yeah. what does it mean to you? But I think a lot of people panic. Mm -hmm. Like I would hit against my opponents. They're afraid I'm going to hit another drop shot or they're going to yeah. worry me hit another lob, you know, so they panic. Yeah. And... Yeah. So what if I do one more? Yeah. You just try to get another shot right. back. And you, so. ju you just said something super um, important. They are trying to think for you. <laughs> You're supposed to be thinking for yourself. You're yes. supposed to be talking to yourself and, and planning what's going to happen. And it is so common that we get into our heads and all of a sudden we abandon who we are and we start trying to figure out you know, what is he going to do? And that, that to me is That's like true. one of the reasons why people can't watch the ball because it's so much more interesting in, in their heads to, to see what they're doing as if you could control what that person is going to do. They're going to do whatever they want to yes. do, whether you look at them or not. So you might as well. That's true. You, know, you can't control what your opponent's doing. You mm -hmm. might be able to, you know, don't allow them to hit a big shot that they like or yeah. things like that. But when a ball comes to you, Worry what you're gonna do, yeah. and within your, yeah, you know, it's in your. I mean, easier said than done, yeah. but <laughs> but that is what we should do anyway. <laughs> next question. All right, so you have mentioned in the past that competition doesn't make you nervous, and instead you thrive from it. Um, can you tell me some of the things that make competition so exciting for you? So. Um, so when it comes to competition, we all get nervous in anything. Uh -huh. You know, this podcast can make me nervous, <laughs> right? <laughs> so, right. but, you know, it's how you turn that nervous energy for in advantage in for you. In your favor. In yep. your favor. Yeah, turn that nervous energy in your favor. And it also comes with experience, you know, mm -hmm. because I play for many, yeah. many, many years that I know what the feeling is like. But once I know that feeling and... 
I can it's like, oh, this is what I thrive on. Yeah. You know, I love that feeling. Uh-huh. You know, it's better than just sitting at home watching TV. Yeah. And do you want that <laughs> feeling, boring feeling, or do you want this intensity, yeah. the nervousness yeah. that you, that's, you know, the yeah. match a competition is putting right. on you. And I also love to um, bet on stuff. Often, <laughs> yes, <laughs> not on my own game, of course. Okay. So like often, like I'll p- play with a person and... You know, if I just play for fun, sometimes I lose focus. Okay. Because I'm like, this match doesn't mean anything, la, la, la. But if I bet for a coffee, a donut, lunch, dinner, then this match means something to me. (laughs) Oh, my God. Right? I love betting. So for my tennis match. And (laughs) I remember I was playing Ruben a few weeks ago. Uh And he was up 7-6-1-0. And I'm in my mind, I'm like, why am I not focused? Because, but we're just playing for fun. Yeah. So I told Ruben, I said, do you want to play for lunch? Yeah. You're already up a set and one zero. Let's play for lunch. <laughs> and he's like, oh, okay. You know, why not? You're up a he's set. He's like, I'm going to get a free lunch. Why yeah. not? I didn't we'll lose another game. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> I didn't lose. Because that competitiveness it, comes out, that focus comes out. Yeah. And I'm playing for something that, you know, that matters. Oh, and for me, cool. I thrive on that. Wow. Yeah. So... So I got a free lunch. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So, and I always tell people, you know, we, we don't play tournaments all the time. It's impossible. Mm-hmm. And for people who loves, I, I see so many people when they're playing for fun, they're playing amazing, mm-hmm. hitting all their shots. But once a real match yeah. starts, they freeze. You change. They freeze. And they cramp. They Some people yeah. they start cramping. So, so I tell them my secret is put yourself mentally in that situation more often even yeah. though i'm not playing a tournament mm-hmm. but i'm playing a match that matters mm-hmm. yeah know, even everything with, matters with your friend and by betting for a coffee itself it's it matters to that's me so, so smart yeah that's cool well and, next time we're gonna have to bet for lunch yes and you better watch out and my husband always tells me don't bet david for <laughs> food because well nine out of ten you're gonna lose <laughs> oh my god that's too funny all right. Okay. So going on, how how do you manage the fear of losing? I think we we talked about it, right? Because yes. you're you're learning from from you know what if when you don't win, you know you could learn something. Yeah, and also you're... the thing is, if you lose this match in tennis, there's always another match. Mm-hmm. There's always another tournament. Yeah. So learn what you lost here. Yeah. And then apply it to the future one, and there's another opportunity for you mm-hmm. to do better. Yeah. So. This yeah. is not the end of your tennis career or your tennis, Yeah, you know, it move on. It doesn't mean, it, it. you know, winning or losing doesn't make you a good or a bad person. Exactly. It's just a game. Yes. It's a tennis ball. It's a tennis racket. It's a tennis court. And it's something Yes, and happened. just remember, there is <laughs> life outside of tennis. You know, <laughs> right? a, a beautiful, great life. Yeah. yeah. Well, you would touch on something um, and it's practice, 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 practice. Yes. You know, practice makes perfect. Yes. There are, you know, some of us, and I would count myself in the past, where I would practice completely different than I would play. Really? And you're basically lying to yourself because that's not preparing you for a match. You're, you're, like, I used to be the queen of going cross court and going down the line for an hour, but no points. You have to play points when you're practicing. You have to put yourself in that situation where you get these butterflies in your stomach, you feel like, oh, my God, my chest. And, you know, you, you have to put yourself in under pressure. You do. And I've seen so many players, they drills, drill, drill, drills. And, yeah, but the balls are coming perfectly and you're expecting exactly where to go. Play, you have to play yeah. points. Yeah. Because you're not going to win for warming your best warm up. You're not going to win from <laughs> the best drilling. You exactly. win. You know, at the end of the day, we're all tennis players. We're all competitors. We want to win, yeah. you know, even though losing is okay. But still, I still want to win. Put yourself, play points mm-hmm. in different situations with different types of players, mm-hmm. you know, to put yourself be yeah. uncomfortable. That's true. And you change your hitting partners yeah. because you, you be get used to people. Yes. Yeah. Cool. All right. Well. Okay. So going on to the next question. One of the players that you admire is Martina Hingis. What did you like so much from her? Well, I must say, um, 
Martina Hengis is one of the smartest players that's ever played a game. Yeah. You know, she came in the era of the Williams sisters, Lindsay Davenport, Steffi Graf, Monica Seles. And all those players are powerful yeah. players. You know, that's because they, they, that's the time of big, big mm-hmm. tennis. Mm-hmm. And her being someone who doesn't have the power, she was able to win so many matches, yep. win five Grand Slams, just using her wit, her mm-hmm. mental toughness, her... Like she plays the game like chess. Yep. Chess. Yeah. Um, she used her angles, she mm-hmm. her drop shot, her all court games. And I kind of like like to emulate that mm-hmm. because when I'm playing tennis, when I saw her play, I'm like, that's the kind of players I can become okay. or I can try to emulate. You know, yeah. I'm not going to be Martina Hingis, of course. Yeah. But I can learn from her and yeah. how she, um, the shots that she uses yep. at a certain situations. Yeah, because you find that that you can actually you have those strokes, mm-hmm. and you can actually emulate someone that looks like you in, yeah. in, on the tennis court. Mm-hmm. And that's that's one of the things that I always suggest to people when you want to follow someone on the tour. Make sure that you're looking at yourself and the things that you already know how to do is not mm-hmm. not really what you want to be, True. but what you can be. And I'm saying I'm not saying that you couldn't learn a new skill and change your forehand or whatever but what makes you you are you an aggressive player or are you a defensive player are you a servant volleyer you know there is a personality that goes with you that you don't want to change that that's what makes you you that's what makes you you, right (laughs) i think we all like are born with a certain talent we all have a talent it could be all different and we kind of, if we figure out what that is we can just say okay i'm going to focus on what i do good and Focus on that instead of trying to be like someone that you're not. Yes, exactly. You know, that goes with tennis or that, and that goes with your personal life. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. you can change who you really are. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you have you to accept who you are, and, but be the best version of yourself. Right. So you are a big doubles player. Yes. I and um, we actually, we played yesterday and we did really well. Yes. <laughs> so what is the key? To playing doubles, you know, because you thrive in doubles and both singles and doubles. But like, how do you help your your partner? How do you help yourself when you're playing doubles? Yeah, actually, I'm a another level higher in doubles. I just discovered that a, in, a few years ago because in 2019, I decided I decided to travel around the world to play tennis tournaments. So I oh, played wow. 22 tournaments in 13 different countries. Oh my God! In twenty nineteen, that's amazing. And that's this is lot. with the the GLTA, right? Yeah, that's this with is, the GLTA, okay. the Gay Lesbian Tennis mm-hmm. Alliance. It's um, unbelievably big. The um the association. It's huge. It's so uh, we have probably seventy tournaments in over thirty five countries. Wow. Yeah. So it's a full calendar. Like this last weekend, there was like three tournaments worldwide at the same time. Oh my God. So cool. it's just as big as the Yeah, the and everybody's welcome. You know, you yes. don't have to be gay to play in it. It's it's just, it's fun, you know. Yeah, we focus, you know, I always tell people, yes, this is a gay, lesbian, tennis alliance, but we focus on inclusion yep. and diversity. That's cool. And we want the heterosexual world to be involved as well. Mm-hmm. Um, I just played in a clay court classic this mm-hmm. year. And my doubles partner who I won with, it's a straight male. Yeah. And my mixed doubles partner is his wife. That's um, so, that is so cool. I mean, I am how, inclusive. <laughs> exactly. All right. But going back to the question oh. of playing doubles, how do you make it easier on your partner to so, play with you? So, you know, doubles is a team sport. Yeah. You know, you can be the best player in the world. If your doubles partner is not with you, mm-hmm. you're not a good team. Yeah. So what I always do is I know what kind of, player my doubles partner mm-hmm. is or and I n- know what they're comfortable with yeah so I don't try to change who they yeah. are but if they miss a shot that they normally don't miss I encourage mm-hmm. them to do it again like if you like okay. yesterday if you like I played with you yesterday if you missed yeah. that forehand I know that's your right. shot go for it again I know I have it I know yeah. I can do if, it if you miss it it's okay yeah. because eventually you'll find it because that's your yeah. game you know I'm not going to say don't hit as hard or hit harder because mm-hmm. If you try to change your game, you can. You Number can. one, you can. You know, mm-hmm. it's a, and I I always go back to to people that that are not nice to their partners. Oh, no. Um, no. you you have to be empathetic of what that person yes. is feeling. They're yeah. feeling lonely. Mm-hmm. They're feeling frustrated. They're feeling nervous. They're mm-hmm. feeling like they have a responsibility with you. 
They're feeling like they're missing. Their their trust is on the floor. <laughs> so, you know, you have to realize that they're having a hard time and, and you can't go and tell them what to do. Exactly. You because know, technically. how would you feel if you miss a shot and your partner say, David, what did you miss? Exactly. Like, I don't <laughs> yeah, want that too. So why would I want to put that on someone yeah. else? Yeah. Yeah. So, so just like you said, lift the person. Tell them what they sometimes forget about themselves. You you have a good forehand. Thank you, right? You know, hit it again. If you tried to poach and you made a mistake, go for it, you know, yeah. because that's, that's working. True. Because right? I always tell, like, my doubles player uh, friends, that it's like being a good doubles player, it's not only you have the good double shots. Yeah. Uh, it's also how you can help your doubles yeah. partner to be a team player. Mm -hmm. You know, that's just as important as you having a good volley. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, unfortunately, some of the, and I don't count myself in this group, thank God, you know, some of the people that, that are not that empathetic with other people on the tennis court, a lot of time is because they're, they're reflecting a lot of their insecurities on, on their partner. You it know, is. Their, I've seen some doubles matches and one player just missed a shot. And he tells the partner, come on, let's go. Don't miss. I'm like, um, you bitch, girl, <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, you're the one okay. that just missed a shot. Why are you putting pressure yeah. on your partner? Yeah. So, yeah, it's a reflection on, on yourself yeah. often. Yeah. And that's why I think maybe that's what I do because I tell my partner and myself, yeah. if you miss it, it's okay. Try next one yeah. and just play your game. Right, because so, that's what you would be saying to, to yourself. And that's what I would want mm -hmm. my partner to say to me. If yeah, I miss. Right. So. And it, it really, you're not going to become a better player in five minutes. Mm -hmm. Somebody's pressure is not going to make it, you know, <laughs> tough love is not going to work at that point. No. So. And also, look, we all miss. If we don't miss, we'd be number one in the world. Okay. Exactly. So we yeah, all miss. <laughs> exactly. That's, that's so funny. it's okay. It's yeah, normal. That's cool. <laughs> Wow, we could talk forever, yes. but um, you know this subject of of doubles is so important because it's, you know, the majority of of us as, as we start getting a little older, <laughs> we start playing more doubles, and yes. it the, the social aspect of it is so cool and yes. so important, you know. And you know, playing doubles also helps your singles game as well. Yeah, it helps tennis period because when I play doubles, I'm actually even more relaxed. I'm like, I'm just gonna go for my serve yeah. even more. You know, because if I miss the serve, I only have to cover yeah. half of the core. So I'm more relaxed. I can work on my serve. I can work my returns. Yeah. It's so important because yeah. return, I think, is the number one thing. In oh, doubles, my God. Yeah. Know? So by training yourself for to return, it's going to help your singles game. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, mentally, you're pressured to return a certain way. Yeah. So by again, by training your brain, uh -huh. giving yourself that pressure when you play doubles, it will help in your singles in that yeah. mindset. Yeah, yeah, they're they're completely different sports, even mm -hmm. though you're playing them on the same tennis court. <laughs> yeah, but they work differently. You yeah. know, the accuracy is a little bit more important it's a more in doubles important. because you have less court now. All of a sudden, you have four people playing in a court where before you had two people, regardless of the fact that you know. You yeah, I always say doubles it. will help your tennis game, whether you only mm -hmm. want to play doubles or singles. Yeah, and sometimes, in in my opinion. It's easier when it comes to dealing with your nervousness mm -hmm. because you have someone with yes. you, you know, yes. that hopefully is empathetic yes. and is helping you. And, you know, I always like I have I have had many different partners in 2019. I play, you know, 22 tournaments. I won 11 titles with 10 different partners. Oh, my God. Right. So but, you know, I learn who I like, who I don't like. Yeah. And. I don't care how good you are, you are. If you're a not not a nice partner, yeah. I don't want to play with you. Yeah. You know, yeah. because there's plenty of nice people, good mm -hmm. partners that you can play with. And if you're a bad per doubles partner, like as a yeah. mean person, you're going to run out of people. Yeah. That people wants to can play with you. see. People yeah. can see what's, what's happening and, you know, news travel fast. Yes. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> well, we could talk forever. But promise me you're going to come back and we're going to talk more. Thanks for having it's, me. It's my first podcast. Oh. I, I, it's so fun. <laughs> See, it, it wasn't yes. that hard. No, not at all. <laughs> anyway, but uh, thank you to all of you guys that are following us. And please, please, as I always say, if you have any questions, anything that you would like me to talk about, any, any subjects, I would love to 
um, you know, do the research and bring you what you want. And thank you again for coming over. Yes. And we will see you soon. All right. Thank you. Bye. Bye.